Hey folks, welcome to part three of uh, theme four, the harp. Uh, the past two weeks, we've been looking at what it means to be a citizen of this country. How do we define that? As well as what are the rights uh, and civil liberties that we all can ascribe to based on our founding documents, as well as what's in our current legislation. So we've looked at what it means to be a citizen, as well as the rights that we have. Now we're going to start looking at how do we actually give and take with the government? What are the ways that you and I contribute to government or ways that we can contribute to uh, local government, state government, or even the national government. So again, as we get into this, here's a brief little ref reminder about this organizer here. Again, if the, if the government gets its power from the people, if the people change, then therefore the government should as well, which would follow with natural logic. But as you can see that there are, di there are several different w methods here or ways that we can actually make our voice known. So if we change our beliefs as a, as a, as a nation, or if enough of us believe so, uh, strongly about something, government will change and uh, not only create legislation and executive orders, but policies, um, ways of doing things, rituals, traditions that take what we want and make it part of the foundation of our, of our government, or at least it should in theory. So um, as we get through this, you are still writing your messages to elected representatives. You're focusing on civil rights that you care about, and you're basically communicating with your elected representative about what you think they should do about those civil rights movements. Now, why do we contribute? Why is it that we spend so much money, uh, time, energy, effort, donations as private individuals, people like you and I, why is it that we contribute to government? What's the big diff? What's the point? There are three dominant uh, theories. One of them is that we have what they call a civic, you might also see it called a civil religion. Basically, that we revere our government. We revere the founding documents. We revere the, the patriots who uh, were in the Continental Army during the Revolution, who uh, crossed the Delaware River to go defeat the Hessians. We, we look at this, uh, this country and we say, not only are we a flag, a pledge of allegiance, a national anthem, but we're a group of people that all believe in this, this found, fundamental human equality, these rights that were not given to our forebears. Basically, that... We can trust the government and the, the country of the United States is exceptional and that it is the best country in the world. And that is what we try to cel celebrate on July 4th. Um, there are other leading theories include the fact that we just do things because we believe in the common good, that if we were to expand human rights to all individuals in the United States, we're doing that because it also impacts us as well to some extent. So um, we make life better for everyone around us because that's just the common good. It's what we should all do. It's just something that... It's like asking, uh, do you want peanut butter and jelly? And someone's saying, no, it's just not right. And if you just said no to that question, I invite you to consider your beliefs. Um, the other leading theory is just, we just do it because it's part of our laws. Um, the fact that the government says that uh, you have to serve on a jury um, and you have to show up there and or if you have to pay taxes, it's we just do it because we have to, not because we want to. So I invite you to look at these three different theories, civic, religion, the common good, or legal obligation, and then kind of pick the one that you think you follow. Which theory do you support the most, or are these not comprehensive? Is there something else? Is there a fourth theory that you can come up with about why you contribute to government? Now, the different ways that we contribute, there's a lot of them. So I'm going to kind of go over them, give a brief gist of each one, but I'm going to try to breeze through this next section. If you have any questions or want to discuss with me, like what are the ways that you and I contribute to government on a daily basis, hit me up. Let's go. Um, but the first thing that a lot of folks do, if they're not uh, native born in the United States or they um, hold citizenship or residency in other countries before immigrating to the United States, um, this become they become naturalized citizens. Naturalization, again, is a process for how someone becomes a citizen in this country. They have to go through a lot uh, in terms of paperwork as well as meeting certain qualifications to finally be able to say that, yes, I'm a citizen of the United States. And when they finally reach the end of the road, the naturalization ceremony, it is a very beautiful thing to uh, see people who are there because they worked really, really hard to become a citizen of this country. And they know that it comes with certain benefits that you and I might take for granted. Uh, we also register to vote and we continue to vote. We just don't show up at, uh, at the time when a politician promises us something we like. We show up and we vote every other every two years for the midterm elections just as much as we do for presidential elections, or at least it's in theory what we're supposed to do. Um, that we pick our leaders and that the person who gets the most votes wins. Uh, it's one of our most treasured ideas if we claim to live in a democracy. 
Also protesting, rallying, petitioning, assembling, using our First Amendment rights to communicate what we want as a group of people or by ourselves with the government. Also donating money, time, and energy to campaigns. So you have the opportunity as an individual to work for congressional campaigns. You may go door to door talking to talking to people about why you think that uh, trying to get them to think about your candidate as the best candidate for a particular election or race. Um, you may donate private, uh, what is it, what you see over here, small donations. 35% of all 2020 campaign funding was uh, from people like you and I. We chipped our, our money into these campaigns for people we liked, the people that we wanted to get into the election. And then from there, we helped uh, give $191 million for those campaigns. So not only do we donate money, we also donate our time, energy, uh, and as well as other resources that are not maybe on the slide. We also contact our elected representatives. You all are getting a little bit more familiar with that in class, so I won't spend too much time on that. But basically communicating with Washington and saying, hey, this is what we want you to do to represent your districts uh, or the districts that you are from here in the state of Indiana or the entire state, I should say. So making our voices heard. Uh, working on behalf of the U.S. government, the United States government is the largest employer in the United States. Millions of people work for the United States government. Because there are so many laws on the books, because there are so many people, we have 328 million people estimated uh, that live in this country. It takes a large amount of people to enforce the laws. It takes a, lot of, a large amount of people to inform uh, congressional representatives about the thousands of bills that they may have to discuss during a legislative session. Uh, it, it, it takes a lot of uh, employees to run national parks, to be able to uh, turn the lights on at the Capitol building every day, to clean the stairwells in all the government buildings, to um, take care of all the little day in and day out things that a lot, that you and I don't think about because we're not part of it. They also, excuse me, representatives, representatives also represent their constituents or the people who vote for them or who could vote for them uh, while they're in office. But they also, you also notice that there are other people that when they contact their elected representatives, they're also communicating for lo loved ones. So I may reach out to my uh, state senator and say, hey, I think you should be doing this because I might have a loved one that's like really impacted by a particular issue. And I can give that person uh, a little bit of the, the testimony or the insights of what my family member, or my loved one is experiencing um, because maybe my loved one doesn't have the... Uh, the means to contact their elected representatives themselves. We also produce supplies. You will find that the government is also uh, one of the biggest spenders in the economy. Um, look up GDP and the formula. You'll see that we specifically look at, we calculate how much money the government's spending on the American economy every single year. And you'll find that a lot of federal contractors like architects, uh, designers, builders, uh, f uh, manufacturers, they make and supply things for all areas of government, whether it's making the buildings, supplying the military, uh, researching and developing new cyber technologies uh, like 5G, for example. We do all these things because not only do we get a contract and some money from the government, but it, it benefits our country as a whole. We might also join the military if we feel so strongly convicted. Um, there are five branches. And if this is something you want to talk about, uh, I would invite you to go talk to your counselor and uh, reach in, uh Sorry, look into doing the ASVAB as well. But we will serve in the armed forces at times when, um, in times of war or when things are at peace, but they still need people to patrol the, patrol the world and make sure that we're maintaining good alliances or friendships with our, with our neighbors. We'll also attend town hall meetings. We might sometimes get a little uh, carried away in our passions, but we attend meetings in, in, in essence to become informed and to stay informed. We also pay our taxes. We also might serve on a jury if we're called. So you might get a letter in the mail one day. It says, hey, you've been called to sit on this jury. You have to uh, show up on that day and you, you get excused from work. So that's, I guess, one benefit. But you might have to make a hard decision with everyone else around you. There's also obeying all of the laws. So if you're 18 and you're male in this country, you have to legally register for the draft. We call it the selective service, but... If you have not signed up for it, talk to me. I will get you signed up. But we follow the laws because that's what we should do as citizens. And if, um, you know, we may not be perfect at it all the time, you know, sometimes some of us 
speed a little bit more than we should. But for the most part, we try to follow the laws because that ensures safety on the road um, or it ensures that the government has money that can then be used to be, to be spent back on us in the form of education, roads, infrastructure, and the many other things that government will pay for. We also have the responsibility of staying informed. Um, we contribute to the government by keeping up on what the government's doing, because if not, the framers of the Constitution were afraid that, hey, the government would get too powerful. If we as the people, the, one, the ones who have the real power, don't say anything about what it's doing. We also get involved in the community. We say, hey, here's a local issue, like uh, cleaning up pollution at a park. We may contact the local government and say, hey, can we do this on a particular day? The local government may give us resources to go do that. And from there, we can work together as a group to actually do something meaningful in our own slice of the world. We also need to keep an open mind. And this is one of the biggest ones that I think needs to be emphasized um, especially over the past few years, where it just seems like more and more people that might have become a little bit more polarized or divided. But keeping an open mind allows you to see multiple perspectives other than the one that you currently have. And it, while it's not meant to make you disagree with yourself or to have some kind of cognitive dissonance, it is meant to make you think about the many other uh, experiences that maybe others have that you don't have. And from there, you can create a, a rich dialogue where everyone's sharing their experiences. And you may all walk away not agreeing on any single thing, but hey, at least you respected somebody enough to have a conversation with them. So these are the different ways that we contribute to government, sometimes on a daily basis, on a yearly basis, or even over the course of our lifetime. I invite you to pick the ones that are most important to you to make sure that you do all of those and uh, to to really consider how what how what you do the small things and large things really impact government at the local, state, as well as national level. I will see you on class, whether it's virtual or in person, and I hope you are having a great one.